Okay, if you clicked on this video, then you probably have a lot of issues or had issues in the past installing databases locally and configuring them for multiple projects. If you like me developing a lot of projects at the same time, you probably miss that freedom of having just a single database with a single project dependency. So luckily, today we are going to discuss how to avoid all of that issues and run databases seamlessly on your local environment and keep even separate database instances for each of your projects. And all of that achieved by a Docker. So it sounds a bit tricky, but in order to get running a database smoothly on your development environment, you have to have a Docker. And the Docker container is really meant to be managing your development environment pretty seamlessly. It involves a bit learning curve, but that kind of acceptable uh, compared what kind of benefits you are get, uh, getting out of that. And Without further ado, let's just jump in with the straight uh, one of the examples how to configure your database for one of our projects, which we have done previously. If you remember, Node.js TypeScript uh, starter kit. If you haven't yet watched that video, please uh, check out that and uh, don't forget to click that like button on this video. That will help a lot uh, for the future of this channel. So let's just jump in and uh, try setting up some local databases, which is obviously why we are here today. So to run Docker container for Postgres, we first can look over Docker documentation and you can find out that in Docker Hub's uh, page for PostgreSQL. So I don't have to look up. I already knew what this, the command will be because I use that very often. So in order just to start a Docker container, you basically have to write down the actual command docker run and provide a daemon mode, which means that it will be running in a background. We are going to name this container like Postgres db and uh, we have to provide an environment variable like postgres password postgres we will make just very dummy thing and we are going to provide also environment variable postgres db to actually name our database and in, in this case let's name it node starter because uh, we are going to use this from our previous project, which is Node.js and TypeScript starter kit uh, that we made a video about that. And then we are going just to start our Postgres instance by typing uh, just an image name. So this will actually run uh, your Postgres container locally. And you can check that by running Docker PS. This shows up that we have a Postgres that database running inside Docker container and we did actual command and it's app, everything is healthy, but there is a one issue that this Docker container is not actually bind to our uh, host machine with this port, which means that whenever we try to access this uh, PostgreSQL with the basic Postgre connection string, it won't work because we don't have a connection with it. So it runs inside the Docker container, but not bind it to the host machine. So in order just to access that uh, from your host machine, you basically have to uh, provide a port binding configuration, which means that we can add uh, external command here saying that hey we want to bind this uh, local container port to our host machine which is in my case this Mac laptop uh, host machine port and this of course gives me a conflict because I still have a docker instance running with the same name so I have to kind of kill that postgres db and I have to remove that docker rm postgres db 
so after cleaning that up, I can start my Docker container. And now when I do Docker PS, everything is fine because if you see my actual Docker uh, instance binding port with the PostgreSQL port works and we have a running Docker database in our local environment. So, and whenever we don't need it, we just remove that. It's no longer any issues there. Exactly the same way we can work with our MongoDB uh, database. And we, in case of MongoDB, it's even easier because initially MongoDB doesn't require you to have any sorts of a configuration like database naming or password. You can just start that up and then uh, make everything up with your uh, connection string actually. And MongoDB actually makes everything up on the fly. So to start a MongoDB, you actually running docker run minus D for daemon mod and naming it as Mongo db of course and providing an image name mongo but in this case we still have the same issue that we also have to provide our port which is in mongo's case by default is 27017 and 27017 this will pull a public docker image uh, for MongoDB and after downloading all of the layers and making sure that this Docker container name is available, it will just spin up a new container and will bind to this public port uh, for my uh, laptop. And then I, I will be able to access this MongoDB image uh, from pre any other application and if i run docker ps now i get two containers running one mongodb and one postgresql and these all things just matter in terms of uh, connecting through your applications if you use multiple databases or even you want to use multiple versions you can just pull a different uh, docker image for it and just start it and in my own system i don't have any postgresql or Mo mongodb software installed i just pulled that up uh, from docker images as you can see it is super easy to get started and run databases locally without installing a, a, as a separate software on your local environment you can just pick up and use docker images instead but there is a one corner case that i want to point out because that uh, you could learn in a bad way meaning you can lose your data whenever your container is removed for example if i remove my mongodb container right now i will lose my my all of my data but there is a case where if you see on a docker con docker hub page for the mongodb there's a documentation part which makes it easy to understand that whenever you mark as a separate volume and point out that hey i want to keep this container data inside my local host machine directory and whenever you kill and remove a container data will be persisted on your disk space and that command is basically uh, looks like this whenever you want to keep let's say a data inside a mongo data called folder uh, as I described here, which is mounted inside the database data DB, which is by default the configuration folder and data folder for MongoDB. <clears throat> and if I try to run this uh, container, uh, I'll get up and running another do Docker uh, MongoDB instant, but at this point, its volume of uh, slash data pointing to my local directory called MongoData. Uh, and if you see inside that, we have pretty much everything that we need uh, for running a MongoDB instance. And if I even remove my MongoDB instance, meaning that if I will kill my MongoDB second instance and I will remove my MongoDB second instance, 
my data, Mongo data is still there. So whenever I start up again, same container, I'll get the same uh, data back as it was before. So that's probably the most important thing to understand for maintaining your containers regularly. But uh, for my personal use case, I usually start container and never remove them unless there is some really huge issues. Let's say I started a MongoDB instance and after some time my, my computer went to restart. I'm just typing, hey, docker start MongoDB and my local container will start up again and I don't have to create a new container every time. I just name it and then make a start and stop depending on the specific use case and using a database container whenever I need it. That's probably it for this time and hopefully that tip was a huge improvement on your development environment and hopefully you don't run any database issues in the future. If you have any questions, just, just let me know down on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We are getting a ton of updates soon.